So the real meat of this spreadsheet is in the order sheet. So we're going to spend a bit of time here, but hopefully I can do it concisely enough so you don't start nodding off. And just, why am I starting my proteins business? Okay. So let's do, uh, it's hard to know where to start here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll go to the right, right click and collapse all row groups. So you can take a look at this uh, sheet in its basic form. The order sheet is set up to do three harvests per week. Uh, now you can do any three days you want uh, and you don't need to use them all. So right now it's set up to do a harvest on Tuesdays and Fridays with no third harvest. So for each of these, I can open it up by just clicking on those pluses and you can see each of the harvest days for Tuesday, starting from my uh, first initial date, is in here. Now your first date should really be like the first Tuesday harvest or the first Tuesday of the year. Um, I just did this because this is the time of year that I'm doing this tutorial and when a date passes on this sheet, the sheet, the background turns red. So if I had, you know, January 1st, 2020 in there, that all these cells would be red. And um, as it says here, these cells turn red once these dates have passed. What that tells you is I don't need to think about those sheets anymore. As long as everything's up to date, it's done. So yeah, you can see that uh, each sheet is broken down and that way when I want to do an order, I can just basically go and find the date I want and work with that order. Here, so we've got the date. Each of these dates copies automatically, so you're just entering the one date. Here, uh, this is the, the week of the year or the week from your first harvest. And then these here just break down different orders, which I'll go into right away here. So let's open up one of these sections and take a look at what an order looks like. So as you might expect, uh, there's going to be customers and crops within these orders. And you can see I've got them here. Here's my drop down menu for my customers. Here's my crops, wholesale or retail. And once again, this is actually optional, but it's set up for auto pricing. So I've left it in there, but you can leave it blank. Actually, you don't need to fill those out. It is a good reference so you know wholesale versus retail sales. You need to pick a size. As we talked about, you have small, medium, large, and trays. And then you need to choose your quantity and your price. So once again, auto price filling, price may auto fill in the future. Future for now, you're gonna fill that in. The totals are just simply the price by the quantity. So this is how you put in a simple order. Now, if you have multiple products for the same customer, you're gonna put in that customer multiple times, like you can see I've done with grocer, grocer one, restaurant one, whatnot. Um, this is, it seems a little wasteful, but it gets very quick, very fast, and this is really a very efficient way to do this. Now, once that information is in, the spreadsheet goes to work. So I'm gonna just direct your attention to this little corner up here. I'm gonna change this H to a six. And what you're going to see is, uh, hopefully, this little bar pop up here. And you can see what that looks like. So what it did, it was sort of like thinking, calculating, changing all the information, and then finishing up. Something simple like that happens fairly quickly. Uh, we'll do that, just change it back. So it's processing, making the changes, finishing up. Now, if I change one of these dates, it's going to take a lot longer. So what it's doing is it's uh, each of these orders is copied to the next week, which is copied to the next week, which is copied to the next week for all the Tuesdays in the year. So right away, if I just put in this grocery order for eight small uh, units at $4 of these three products, I already know what that, per that uh, looks like in a year because it fills that out automatically. So this is a very, very quick way and accurate way to do projections. As I mentioned before, it's better to have an order come in, be in your spreadsheet and you not need it than to forget an order and then not have it. So the, the copying is because most orders over time end up being standing orders. And you're going to be looking at your orders all the time. So it just helps you not have to input them all the time and lowers your risk of mistakes. Okay, so once you've put the orders in, there's two summaries that happen here right away. One, you just have a quick summary of your customers and the value of their orders. And right here, I've got a sense of my um, sales for that Tuesday of $463. And then there's a summary of my crop actions. So this is the soaking, sowing, and uncovering, and then how many trays I'm gonna need to, to for that. Here is where you put in your seed lot number. So if you have any tracing to do, 
you know what seed lot it came from. Really important if you need to do a recall. So this is basically orders in a nutshell right there. Um, what's important is these are orders for November 3rd uh, and the first action is uh, October 25th. So you can't put in orders for November 3rd on November 1st and expect that the crop planner is going to generate crops. You need to put your orders in ahead of time, which is why these orders just skip to the next week automatically. But you always need to be keeping an eye on this. And the easiest thing to do is when you're on soaking and sowing days, you're just checking your orders. Are they up to date? Is there anything coming up? Should I sow more of a buffer? You should do that once or twice a week. So I do that uh, Mondays and Thursdays, which are my main sowing days before my harvest days on Tuesdays and Fridays. Works really well. Twice a week, looking at orders, making sure they're all up to date, pretty much eliminates mistakes. So that's orders in a nutshell. These sections also all collapse if you just want something out of the way. And so these crop actions and sales summary, you don't even really, you don't really need to look at them. This is all you really need for your orders. The only reason to have crop actions open is to put your seed lot number in there. This is kind of useful because it does give you a sense of just looking, you know, because you're going to be putting this in and then you'd be like, oh shit, that's tomorrow. So anyways, we'll get to that. Two more things I need to point out here about uh, an order. So you see we've got these three numbers up here and what they represent are three different order types. So these first here are, are this, this, these top cells. I have 11 orders here, I have 11 here. So it summarizes these. Now we have room for lots of orders each week. And as we scroll down, I get to this section and it's future orders and markets. So let's start with markets. If I've got a farmer's market from May through October and I know about that in February, I wanna put that into my crop planner. The information's in there, the markets are there, I'll put in my projections for, for uh, all my crops and I'll change them as I, as I need to, but they're in there. And the, the reason these are separated is because, because orders copy to the next week automatically, if I put something in at cell 50, and uh, but I, I have uh, orders from the previous week that would overwrite that, then there's gonna be a discrepancy. So this is basically kind of separating it from your main orders to make sure that orders aren't overwriting orders from the next week. Same thing with future orders. Now these do both copy to the following week, uh, but that's totally fine. Markets can say, stay separate. For future orders, if I was to go down and say, and I have got this here, so let's just go down here. I have a future order here. I put this in for whatever our date was there. I wasn't paying attention. We're in week 13. And so I've got this order in here and this is a, this could either be a one-time order or a, a repeat order. And repeat means like twice or more. And hopefully twice or more is just a standing order. It happens every week. So it's in here. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuring that it gets sewed, but if it's gonna be a regular order, it's no longer a future order. So what I would probably do is I would copy this. Let's just do that. I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna take it up to my regular orders because it's now basically going to be a regular order. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to paste uh, values only, or you can do control shift V as well. Now, I'm going to delete these. I'm going to do this in two stages. I'm going to delete these. Now, if you look here in this cell and you look up here, you see there's a, a number here. And this is basically the same cell in the previous week. But you can see now when I move up to these cells I deleted, that is gone because I just deleted them. So to get them back here, you can select these cells here. I just uh, hold, click hold shift and then I'm just using my right cursor, control C to copy, and then I'm gonna select all these here and then I'm gonna do control, uh, no I'm not, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to paste special, and I'm gonna go to paste formula only. So now I'm re basically replacing those formulas and it automatically knows to change the numbers because formulas are relative. Okay, and then you can see my future orders shows up again because that was in the previous week so it's, it, that's a little bit of like the most advanced thing you're going to need to do. 
and that's just going to reduce mistakes. Now that order I put up there is a regular order every week up here. So you're going to learn to fandangle this stuff yourself. That's just one thing to be mindful of and what these numbers are. And I, you know, I was, I just added those not too recently because these are really useful for finding errors. Um, I just find, okay, oh, like, okay, here's a week where now I've got markets, right? I've got markets in here. That doesn't seem right. March 23rd, you know, oh yeah, they're there. Da, da, da. So it, it, you'll find it really just helps find things if you've entered something wrong. So, so what we've done is we've looked at Tuesdays, but I have two harvests a week. So my Fridays, and you can see I didn't change the dates here, so they're red. These are these are just later. These dates have passed, and then you'll see. Now we're up into the into real time here. This is the color that they should be. So you can see there's orders in here already, and you know here again we've got 17 regular orders and five farmers market orders. That's pretty consistent throughout the whole thing here. Different in the beginning. Usually earlier in the season, your sales are lower and then they ramp up as you go. So this model, <coughs> this model here is uh, set to do that. But you can see I have corresponding week numbers. And I didn't change the dates here, but you know, when I go in on my Tuesday and I'm doing, you know, changing, looking at week 16, I'm also thinking like, do I have customers that are getting two deliveries a week? And do I have to do a Friday order and a Tuesday order? So I can just come quickly here and go to week 16. I don't have to work out, okay, you know, February 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, you know, it's just going by week number once you're in things. And again, once these all turn red, like you're not even thinking about these. These don't even factor in. And if you want to make it even simpler, you can select while they're collapsed, those three cells, right click and go to hide and they disappear completely. I love hiding stuff when I don't need it. Uh, once again, the challenge with spreadsheets, and I'm just going to control Z that because I want it there. The challenge with spreadsheets is that they just show way too much information. And so hiding information is a good way of really just bringing some of that information to be more manageable. And again, I'm done here. I can, I can um, close that down. You can also right click and expand all the row groups as well. There may be a case where you just sort of want to skim through really quickly and take a look at everything. So you might just be sliding down, looking for something that stands out, some weird thing. So yeah, there's lots of ways to use it. Uh, you're going to find a way that works for you. But to, to most easily get where you want to go, right click, collapse all row groups, select the harvest where you want to go, find the date or the week you're looking for, open that up and then do your changes there. So hopefully that's not too complex. Uh, when you're using this multiple times a week, it's going to become very familiar very quickly. This is the great things about microgreens is you're producing so many crops in succession, you learn this stuff very fast, as opposed to one potato crop a year, where you got to wait a whole other year to do that same thing again. And you, you don't retain a lot of the things you think you're going to remember. So this is why you tend to learn this stuff very quickly. So. You can always come back to this tutorial, um, but in general, I think you're going to figure this out fairly easily um, if you're using it a lot. Now, this is the place you're most likely to have problems, I think, is in this sheet. So if you ever have a question, let's just open this up here. Something's not right here. You can um, right click and go comment. And if you put at garlic patch at gmail.com and then write something there, I'm going to get a notice that says so-and-so has made a comment and tagged you. If you ask a question, I can go right to that spot and say like, ah, you named your spicy mix one, but it's not a mix. It's a crop. You missed, you know, whatever it is. Um, I can usually troubleshoot very, very quickly. Uh, I don't get a lot of these questions. So when I do, I can usually answer them pretty quickly. I'm just going through, you know, you know, a few a week. Um, so if I start to get really, really loaded on those, uh, I may stop answering them because my <laughs> capacity is quite limited. So, but that is a quick way. And, um, yeah, so that is a way to get a hold of me. So this is an overview of orders. This is where you're going to spend a lot of time because it's your orders that generate your tasks. And this is every week. This is just telling you, okay, what are my sales looking like? And if you've done that projections sheet, you already know like, okay, $463 on Tuesday, 
And let's just go quickly uh, to our uh, Friday. And this will make sense when we get there. It's a very big sheet, so it can be a little... And we can see this is about 1372 for Friday. That's because we've got a big farmer's market there. Together, that's about $1,800 a week. How does that drive with our goals? We're looking at $2,000 a week. So we're not that far off, actually. And if we think about moving on in the season, we can see this number increases. And this is nice here because it's showing uh, each week the totals um, without even having to open it up. So I'm getting into $1,600 a week here in week 28 on Fridays. And I'm just going to go back up to my Tuesdays, go to week 28. See how easy this is? $1,200 there because we've got our summer market. And so there were about $3,000 a week. And so now you're thinking, wow, that's great. But you're going to have weeks that are over $2,000, weeks that are under. And as long as they average out to that, then you're going to be fine. So that's orders. I know there's a lot there, uh, but once again, there is a bunch of details here in the uh, sheet instructions that go over a lot of this stuff. Take a look at that again and just get familiar with that. And again, the best way to, to know the sheet is to put in your orders. So uh, the version you get will be blank, or you can uh, copy this filled version actually as well when it's ready, and then you can work from there. So good luck with orders and have fun. From here, we're going to move on to harvests and tasks. And this helps organize things and record things after our orders are put in and we're in production.